The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and gender nonconforming individuals to another episode of The Benjamin Dixon Show. Today is Thursday, July 27th, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. Hashtag indictment watch is trending on Twitter or on X or whatever Elon Musk is calling it today. As the nation is looking towards Washington, D.C., a grand jury probing the 2020 election has arrived at a federal courthouse underneath the direction of special counsel Jack Smith. According to NBC News, former President Donald Trump announced last week that he received a letter notifying him that he is the target of a grand jury examining the January 6th riot and efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The former president, for his part, has not chosen to remain silent. He has been very vocal, posting this following clip on Truth Social last night. After the people who cheated in the election, they only go after the people who report on or question the cheating. This will go down as the biggest disgrace in American history, even bigger than the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. If you don't have honest elections and strong borders, you don't have a country. And right now, we don't have a country. Now, all things considered, this is this particular response is rather benign considering the response he gave last week on a conservative radio show. Say Jack Smith says, okay, I'm going to put Donald Trump in jail. I think it's a very dangerous thing to Mm -hmm. even talk about uh, because we do have a tremendously passionate group of voters. And I mean, maybe, you know, maybe 100, 150. I've never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. Much more passion than they had in 2020 and much more passion than they had in 2016. I think uh, it would be very dangerous. Now, keep in mind, this is the third potential indictment out of four possible indictments that the former president is facing. You will recall Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg announced that he indicted rather Donald Trump for falsifying New York business records in order to conceal damaging information and unlawful activity from American voters. This is according to a press release from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Also, there is the special counsel investigation into the documents at Mar-a-Lago, the top secret documents that were stored in bathrooms and shared with random visitors to Mar-a-Lago. That's the federal indictment. This indictment that's taking place, the federal indictment that's looming in Washington, D.C. today. And finally, the fourth potential indictment in Fulton County, Georgia, Atlanta, where District Attorney Fannie Willis is pursuing an indictment of Donald Trump for putting pressure, targeting Georgia election officials to and the governor of Georgia and other lawmakers putting pressure on them to overturn the results of the election in 2020. Donald Trump is the most indicted former president in the history of this empire. And he really wants conservative America, white America, to know that he's doing it for them. This is all about them. The people of our country get it. As far as I'm concerned, I consider it a badge of honor. To be indicted, I would consider a badge because I'm doing it for the country and I'm doing it for the people. Now, now again, that is the twice indicted, potentially three times indicted former president and the twice impeached former president. And in response to this reality that the Republican Party is trying to run a two times impeached president um, candidate for president, the Republicans in Washington, D.C. have decided to try to find anything they possibly can to impeach Joe Biden. Listen to Republican representative from the state of Kentucky, James Comer, as he tries to convince himself that they have enough evidence to impeach Joe Biden. For some in the media, we need more evidence, John. You know, I, I look at what we produced compared to what Adam Schiff produced with the Steele dossier and all that other stuff. I think we've far exceeded anything that Adam Schiff or Jamie Raskin's ever produced uh, on the uh, Russian collusion or, or January 6th or uh, anything. But, uh, you know, for some of you all, it, it's not enough, and we're, we're continuing to, to try every day. And we're fighting the DOJ, we're fighting the FBI, we're fighting a lot of the media, we're fighting the Democrat Party, and we're fighting the Biden legal team. Now, all of this is around the basis that the Republicans are claiming that the Biden family, particularly Hunter Biden, enriched themselves through the usage of the federal government, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
Here is Republican uh, Representative Elise Stefanik from New York, representative from the state of New York, trying to convince Fox News that this is one of the most significant crimes in the history of crimes. Uh, and the American people deserve to know that. They deserve to have all of the facts. Yeah. And we're going to do that. And I believe that what we've uncovered just in seven months alone is stunning. It is chilling. It is the biggest political scandal of my lifetime and perhaps the last century, perhaps ever. But I want to make sure that we have all the evidence possible. You know, I, I want to insert here before I go any further that if they actually had evidence that rose to the level of impeachment, I would support it because the American presidency needs to be held accountable, but they do not have this evidence. They are trying to create critical mass and they've been able, again, critical mass is when they are able to convince a large enough group of people of a lie, but that lie doesn't matter because they're able to get political action. And this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to get political action based on a lie. They do not have the evidence, or at least they have not produced it. But that doesn't stop the Speaker of the House from leaning into this attempted impeachment of Joe Biden. The only way you can investigate that is through an impeachment inquiry. So the committee would have the power to get all the documents that they would need. What I said last night, and I continue, I said it before. When more of this continues to unravel, it rises to the level of impeachment inquiry where you would have the Congress to have the power to get to all these answers. I would think the Biden family would want to answer these questions as well, provide the documents instead of holding them back. We're watching this administration use government much like Richard Nixon used by denying us to get the information that we need. So that's the here, here's the problem for Republicans. They want to create a firestorm and they want to impeach Joe Biden because, well, Donald Trump was impeached twice. Um, they want to move the football and get critical mass so that they can have a firestorm of publicity just in time for the upcoming election. But the problem is, is that they don't have enough evidence to even convince Fox News. And, you know, if you can't convince Fox News to go forward with their conspiracy theories, then you really absolutely have zero zilch. Not step impeachment inquiry. Almost always it leads to an impeachment. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've heard from members of Congress on the Republican side. They are going to they're, they're going to do the I word uh, of Joe Biden and they're going to use the 1023 form as the basis for everything. Here's the problem. The 1023 form makes a damning case against the Bidens, but it's completely unverified. And in fact, there are certain critical parts of the story that have been refuted by the people in the story. So, so it, it, it's problematic. But and so that's why Kevin McCarthy says we need other stuff, more documents. They literally have nothing. And yet they are willing to go forward with it. They can't even convince Fox News but they're willing to go forward with it. And the only reason I personally actually care about this, because I think this is going to be the crown jewel moment of critical mass, right? As I have defined it here, the ability of the conservative movement to create a boogeyman. We see this best in practice with what they have done to the LGBTQIA community, what they've done to the black community to around critical race theory, something that did not exist, but that didn't stop them from generating actual political results. Look at what's happening in the state of Florida with Ron DeSantis. Look at what hap what's happening all around the country with diversity and inclusion programs being completely destroyed. It's because they were able to create a boogeyman and despite it not being true, having no grounding in reality whatsoever, they were able to convince enough Americans to go along with it. They passed laws. They have gotten entire departments in, in universities just completely eviscerated. People have lost their jobs. And so it doesn't really matter. This is the wildest part about America right now. It doesn't matter whether or not the conservative movement has actual truthful evidence to support their agenda. They're able to get Americans to go along with it and create policy that absolutely devastates the American people. And they're doing this with this impeachment of Joe Biden. Look, if you get something on Joe Biden that's impeachable, then then by all means, help yourself. But until you get that kind of evidence, this is just another example of how far the conservatives will go with a lie.
We'll be back right after this. Show. Yep. Visit us online at thebenjamindixonshow.com. Welcome back. Yep. It, it is particularly a very difficult time for black conservatives around the country, um, particularly, specifically the black conservative that I think I call out the most, Byron Donalds, who is the congressman from the 19th Congressional District of Florida. He has come under fire, not by me, but by the Ron DeSantis campaign because Byron Donalds had the unmitigated gall to call out. And, and, and again, let me, let me not say call out. I, I, his response to Ron DeSantis's new curriculum stating that black people or enslaved people benefited from slavery, um, it was really timid. It was gentle. Let me read. Let me read for you what Byron Donald said that got him to be the target of the DeSantis campaign. This is what he said on Twitter, quote, the new African-American standards in Florida are good. No, they're not robust and accurate. Mm. That being said, the attempt to feature the personal benefits of slavery is wrong and needs to be adjusted. That obviously wasn't the goal, and I have faith that the Florida Department of Education will correct this. I mean, listen, this is as this is this is lighter than a slap on the wrist. He 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 did everything he could to to gently massage the criticism, the critique, to to say, hey, hey. White conservatives, I, I, I don't want to fall out of grace with you. I'm not trying to get out of line, but this is just a bridge too far. Well, Christine Pushaw, who is the social media director for Donald Trump. I'm sorry. Nope. <laughs> Ron DeSantis. It's, uh, it's hard. It's easy, rather, to mix up your white supremacists. Uh, this is what she said on Twitter and ratioed him. She said, did Kamala Harris write this tweet? Now, to be fair to her, which I... I don't have to be. That was the mildest response of all the conservatives. Um, this is another response saying, quote, you'll never get my vote again. Sell out. <laughs> uh, another one said, you really have sold out for Trump. OK, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and then another said it didn't take you long to sell out, did it? Hmm. And then another said, here comes the sellout. Pathetic, dude. Pathetic. Uh, you know. What Byron Donald said was so mild. I, I, I mean, he's basically saying you, you got a 99% Ron DeSantis on your curriculum, but that 1% difference is something that I feel like you can correct. And would you please, sir, please consider correcting it. And the DeSantis campaign said, hell no. DeSantis supporters said, get in line, get, get back. Uh, so much for all, all the times I've heard Byron Donalds called black people who vote Democratic, and uh, he says that they're on the plantation of the Democratic Party. Uh, who's being whipped back into line? And, you know, I, I have to pause and say my natural inclination is to when I see a black man be attacked by anybody or black woman be attacked by anybody, my inclination is to, you know, join in and help them. But I, I, I it's kind of hard to do that when. I'm pretty sure Byron Donalds is just going to get back in line. If, if, he, if he takes this moment to change his ways and move away from the white supremacists who fund him, then, then by all means, I would love to see that and I would, I would eat my words. But until such time, he's on his own. Here is Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire. This is what he said on Twitter, quote, 
Any Republican who repeats Kamala Harris talking points loses huge amounts of credibility. Very disappointed to see from Byron Donald. The curriculum briefly mentions that some slaves utilize skills after being freed. This is objectively true and we shouldn't teach it because it hurts my feelings isn't a legitimate or respectable position. See, see, Byron, see what they really think about you. You know, the fact that it, the truth about what happened after slavery is all just almost as bad as what happened during slavery. The amount of laws that were wielded against us to block us from making any progress on our own, the amount of violence that came down on black people after they were freed. How many black people had to stay because they had no other, they, they were not given any resource. They were freed and say, go and be on your own accord. Just, just survive on your own. And, and then to try to frame it, I, I should not have even argued this from the position of where Matt Walsh was trying to argue. He's trying to argue that last generation. How many generations before that lived and died in slavery without the opportunity to utilize any of the skills that were passed down to them from generation to generation because we had skills when we arrived here, when you brought us here. And the, you know, here's the flip side of it is the fact that this, along with everything else that is wrong with Ron DeSantis, has tanked his campaign. He had a he had a layoff over a third of his campaign staff. The funding is starting to dry up. He has the charisma of a Borg. And so it's very likely that he won't make it into 2024 uh, with this campaign because, well, Americans can see him for what he is. He is the confident fascist. He is the competent, not at running campaigns, but when you put him in power, he is extremely competent at executing an agenda of fascism. And America is starting to see him for who and what he is. So this is just another example of conservative men um, finishing too quick, so to speak, or coming to a conclusion sooner than they would like to admit. It's kind of pathetic, actually. Well, you should talk to them about it. I mean, I didn't do it and I wasn't involved in it. Um, but Welcome back to The Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at TheBenjaminDixonShow.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. Come with me down to South Carolina, where residents in Sand Ridge, South Carolina, are up in arms about a proposed highway that would destroy their homes. This, according to the Guardian.com, emphasis on the fact that these communities are black. The article in the Guardian this morning is why is South Carolina still building roads on top of black communities? Um, it is a terrible story that reminds me of exactly what has been done through this country's history, particularly when we saw the interstate system be built. You know, when we see highways being built, they are built through black communities. They displaced entire populations of black people through eminent domain, giving them pennies for their properties. And that land that was passed down. See, this is this this goes back to the end of slavery. There are communities that after slavery built communities. Those communities where black people owned land, had houses, had farming, had culture and communities, they were chosen, targeted is a better word, by the government, state, local, and federal for eminent domain, had our properties taken from us so that they could put highways through our neighborhoods and what ended up happening. As you look at black districts across the country, congressional maps of black districts, they are all surrounding highways. And what do you have in this, these communities now? Well, not only the noise that comes from these highways, but the pollution, the, the increased instances of asthma 
that are that are pervasive in the black community that are le- that's left. That's the communities that are left, right? The the ones that are left to deal with the the pollution that comes from these highways. We've seen this happen for decades. This is a known thing that every black family has experienced or just maybe one or two times removed from a relative or a friend that experienced the exact thing. And we thought it was over. We thought it was something that, okay, they did it and now we're trying to survive and we're trying to move forward with rebuilding our communities. But no, South Carolina said, "Mm -mm -mm, we're not done with you yet. This is coming from theguardian.com. Quote, for decades, Bobby Ann Hemingway Jordan lived on the same property in the same house where she was born. Her backyard was often filled with the sound of her two dozen grandkids as they ran to and from the park next door. For generations, Hemingway Jordan's family lived and farmed on the land, and the 82-year-old believed it would be passed down to future generations as well. She stated, quote, I thought it would be left to my children and they could leave it to their children. Then, in 2021, appraisers offered to buy the land and her house. The sum she received for her three-bedroom, two-bath house was just enough money to purchase a one-bedroom apartment in a nearby community. In April of this year, Hemingway Jordan moved out. Quote, I didn't think I'd ever have to leave the land, she said from her new apartment. All of the memories I've got. All the love, all the things that happened on that property, they couldn't pay me enough for that. Hemingway Jordan grew up in Sandridge, a small majority black community in South Carolina where longtime residents say their homes are being sacrificed to build a controversial infrastructure project. The Conway Perimeter Road would span four lanes and connect two existing highways and allegedly cut travel time for those headed to the nearby beach. And it would also mean destroying at least six homes in Sandridge. You got to get to the beach on time. You know, you you can't take the scenic route. No, it's so important that they have to repeat. South Carolina is getting ready to repeat the same displacement that has been happening to black people throughout this country's history. Right. Throughout the modern history of this country, the interstate system, the highways, they have been plowed right through the heart of black communities. And then we're looked at and, and, and hold on, not just black communities, but black culture. Right. You when you destroy black property, when you destroy black neighborhoods, you are removing and erasing black culture. And now we live in a time where people try to define black culture by what white organizations like the Daily Loud hip hop organizations owned by two white men, what they share on Twitter. That's what defines black culture. Because, well, now they have just completely eviscerated our property, our land, our communities, and our history, and all we have left, at least they, what they want us to think all we have left, is whatever they define us by. This, this is the true story of being black in America, right? This is what really happened after slavery, Matt Walsh and Ron DeSantis. What happened after slavery was one a bunch of empty promises that were never kept. We were never given the land, 40 acres and a mule that we were promised, right? The, the land that the Gullah Geechee people were promised from South Carolina down the, the shores of Florida and 30 miles inward. That was promised, but never given. <laughs> that wasn't enough. We, we, we didn't get what was promised, but we found our own way, developed our own communities, developed our own neighborhoods, had our own culture. And then, well, it was, it was inconvenient because they needed to move highways through our neighborhoods so that, so that workers could get to work more easily, right? They needed to, in South Carolina, they are literally doing this so that people can get to the beach more easily. You know, I, I just really need people to understand that black people are under attack in this country. It's not, it has never just been about the cruelty of racism and racist language and the N-word. It's, a, it's been about the economic attack. It's been about the land, the land that was taken from us. Not only the land that was never given to us that was promised, but the land that we acquired that was taken from us, the wealth that was extracted from our communities. The fact that we don't own, we can't get loans to run black centric businesses in our own neighborhood. 
Hey, we the, the black beauty supplies, rarely owned by black people. The the soul food places, the catfish place where you go down and get the, you know, the special seasoning that they put on top of it that tastes so good, not owned by black people. Every single aspect of the black community has been exploited for the purposes of economic gain. And then they turn around and say, look at you, you cultureless people. Let, let, let me let me leave that alone until we get to the to the, to the patrons only episode patreon.com or slash the bpd show i've got one more story that i want to cover here publicly File this next story underneath, the call always comes from within the house, from inside the house. Elon Musk, who claimed to be combating uh, child trafficking as one of the reasons why he, why he purchased Twitter. Um, last night, he reinstated an account from a black conservative conspiracy theorist. And I mean, he is this guy, Dom Lucre. L-U-C-R-E. He is one of the most ridiculous. It's almost comical how utterly ridiculous the conspiracy theories this guy delves into. It is comical. But uh, yesterday he shared some images of child pornography and sexual abuse that got his account suspended. And after a mass campaign by uh, conservatives to get him reinstated, Elon Musk Admitting that the reason he was taken down was because of these images reinstated the guy who posted these sexual assault images. Here is what literally this is. First of all, I I have to say this. um, Elon Musk is a moron because this is what he posted on Twitter. He said, quote, the reason for suspension should be shown along with ability to appeal quickly and easily. There are so many layers of software, 20 million lines of code, that uh, this is much harder than it should be. I'm told this account was suspended for posting child exploitation pictures associated with the criminal conviction of an Australian man in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And then he continues, only people on our CSE team have seen those pictures. For now, we would delete those posts and reinstate the account. And so the account is back up functioning, sharing all of the wildest conspiracy theories that you have ever heard but that's just exactly what the conservative movement wants um you know it really is a shame that the biggest the most powerful social media platform for this type of communication right twitter what twitter was is and is still sort of it's still significant to the public discourse elon musk came in with the help of all of his Uh, foreign investors and purchased the public square and he has turned it into something that not only serves the bidding of conservatism but it's going as far as to serving the bidding of people who share those kind of images and to be sure i don't believe that dom lucre was sharing those images um in in some kind of way of saying that he likes those images he was sharing those images to get clicks so he used sexual assault against children to get clicks images to get clicks and to me that is that is just as disgusting as sharing it because it's something you like you you are exploiting children for your own personal satisfaction and for your own personal agenda so he should have been suspended and should still be suspended. He should have been suspended a long time ago. But, you know, this is this is the new world we live in. And and to be honest, that's just me being extremely gracious to a person who doesn't, you know, doesn't really deserve grace because he never shares that same grace with any of the people that he targets. Dom Lucra, who he targets, he got like almost 600,000 followers on, on Twitter. Uh, he never gives context or nuance everything with him is a wild conspiracy theory so i really should not have even given him that much benefit of the doubt but the truth is is that this is what twitter has become it is a safe haven 
for some of the most vile cretins who will do anything for clicks, anything for clout, and in this case, anything for white supremacy because he is one of the leading voices. These black, you know, it's been a bad week for black conservatives. That's my time. Patrons, stay tuned. Everyone else, I'll see you tomorrow. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon Show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.